He says, oh God, oh, oh that is so nasty. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures. Coming Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today, hopefully, we're going to be catching some real toads on some toads. Stick around. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today I'm going to be fishing with a classic lure designed by Bill Plummer, none other than the Super Frog. I've never actually fished this lake before. I found it when I was making some errands early in the week, decided to do some research, and then got back here. As soon as I got here, I wasn't sure what we are going to be fishing with, but there are a ton of frogs. Okay, this spot looks really good. I've heard a ton of frogs chirping. I don't know if they're toads or frogs, but there's definitely some amphibian life in there. If I hook something, I'm going to be in trouble because I've got this... Well, we won't talk about that. I caught something, but oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <sighs> you are not going to believe what I just caught on a frog. Oh, how holy smokes. Dude, I don't even know what to do with you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I just caught a giant frog on a frog. Oh my, I don't know how to undo that. Look at that. That is a, that's a two pounder. Well, the good news is the Bill Plummer frog still works today. Um, <laughs> the potentially interesting news Maybe the bad news is, oh God, oh, oh, that is so nasty. Maybe the bad news is that it only catches frogs. Well, there he goes. <laughs> My Bill Plummer frog looks like it's been through a couple of really, really rough mating seasons. Oh, that thing is toast. Um, but the hook held up. All right, let's do a quick gear check in case you guys want to target frogs with similar equipment that I just used today. Our combo is a Daiwa HT100 Magforce reel paired up with a really the ideal frog rod. As you know, it's a five and a half foot medium light pistol grip rod. When you think of frog fishing, there's really no better combo than a basically a bait caster with a five and a half foot medium light bait casting rod. <laughs> Got one. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go, finally. Woo! All right, come on up here, buddy. I'd been missing a few fish and I wasn't sure why. Dink fest in here. But nonetheless, it's pretty cool to get one on the old Bill Plummer frog. This little guy hit in open water about 20 feet out that away. I had been getting a few fish hitting. They'd pull the frog underwater and I could still see the frogs. So I had a feeling they weren't super huge. Well, I got another frog.
Is this a thing now? Uh, I mean, look at that. Another one. N n I know, he's a monster, right? Ugh. <laughs> so apparently, the Bill Plummer Super Frog is super for catching frogs. Hey, so this guy is officially toast. Check this thing out. That hook is all kinds of jacked up. <laughs> That's probably more my fault than the frogs, to be honest with you. Uh, I was trying to get the hook out of him as quick as I could. Um, but I don't know that I can fix that on the bank uh, right now. It's the craziest thing. How have I caught more frogs than bass with a frog? I just don't get it. But luckily, I brought a few back up, so I'm gonna switch to the yellow leopard pattern. Apparently we don't actually catch fish here on Retro Bass, and we just like play with old lures and, you know, catch frogs. And maybe snakes, I don't know, maybe that's next. Birds, squirrels, anything but a bass. That's what we do. Okay, so now that this has basically become a frog fishing, frog fishing show, we're just gonna start sight fishing frogs. I actually see a nice little one and a half pounder over that way. Let's see if he wants to mate or eat or whatever they do. So a little observation for all you uh, aspiring frog fishermen. The frogs like the natural pattern better than the yellow. I think the yellow is freaking them out a little bit. It's a shame I hooked it so jacked up because otherwise I'd be slaying frogs right now. This is like the stupidest episode I think I've ever, probably will ever do. There's another toad. Man, when I told you guys I was gonna be slaying toads today, you had no idea. Oh, look at this thing. Like, I've never seen so many big frogs in one spot ever. This is so weird. No wonder there's no big bass in here. These, these frogs have probably eaten every single bass. These things are huge and they're nasty. Oof just realized one of the things I actually like a lot about this foam filled frog and I didn't appreciate it as much with frog number one I think the guy was a little bit more uh, had a little bit more float to him but because of the fact this thing is solid and it's also got this sort of planing head here as you jerk if you jerk it with a certain cadence it will dive underwater and then as it dives underwater these legs just kick it's probably one of the most natural frogs I've seen. Being not hollow belly, which those tend to float up really high on the surface, this thing, it almost dives underneath. I've seen some Japanese frogs with a similar, uh, almost crankbait, big O style head. I didn't think this thing would do it, but yeah, it, it literally dives underwater. Maybe not great if you're trying to stay above, let's say a big weed mat and you don't want to get down in there, but for open water, this thing's pretty sick. Little tackle update here. Is your rod supposed to look like that where the tip comes off and then rests on the lure? <laughs> I think after 40 years, the glue finally gave up. Oh. <laughs> the trials of a retro basser, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna try to, I don't have any glue on me. Heck, I don't have any gum on me. I'm gonna do what I can to wedge that on there. Oh, that sucks. I don't even know what to do. Just. There we go. Oh, and <laughs> my rod came apart. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, it wasn't a big fish, but it still sucks to lose them, uh, especially when your rod's doing that kind of action. <laughs> Is that a sign it's time to quit? Maybe, I don't know. I was getting ready to go, but I spotted an easy two pounder. Frog. <sighs> Finally. <laughs> So in the comments section below, let me know what you think my problem is. Do I A, suck as a, a frog fisherman, B, have I been quarantined too long to care, or C, um, did you accidentally click on my channel and you meant to find the Guggen Squad? A, B, or C? That's like what? I think it's like four frogs on the day. <laughs> this is just so stupid. Retro frogging. Need to figure out something that rhymes with frogging. Back in the studio, I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about my new little buddy, the Bill Plummer Super Frog. This is definitely not the first frog by any stretch of the imagination, but it is absolutely one of my favorite old school frog baits out there. There's a great article by uh, Ken Duke in Bassmaster Magazine, which talks about the origins of the Bill Plummer Super Frog. Interestingly enough, this story starts out in 1957 in a Massachusetts dentist's office, where Bill Plummer's daughter was promised a toy if she behaved herself during a routine checkup. Bill's daughter Beth ended up with a toy frog after the appointment. Uh, that night Bill borrowed the frog and installed a patented weedless hook that he designed a few years earlier. He took that toy frog to the Sudbury River and it actually caught some bass. Though he was still a flight instructor at the time, Bill tracked down the manufacturer of that toy frog in Japan and ordered hundreds. After about two years of testing and perfecting that frog, Bill got the call he was looking for. Harrison Hogue Manufacturing called and said that they wanted to mass produce Bill Plummer's frog. In addition to the super frog, Bill invented some pretty cool baits for Harrison Hogue, including the Banshee and the Water Demon. I need to get my hands on both of those because I have neither. Here's a handful of some of the loose super frogs that I have. Some pretty cool colors they had back in the day. Got it's black spotted frog, yellow spotted frog, got a natural brown finish here, and the bait I was fishing with today, the natural green finish. What's really interesting about the Bill Plummer frog is its structure. As I mentioned, it does have a solid foam head, which gives it really good weight and also really good buoyancy for casting. This thing does sort of just plod through the water. It really doesn't throw up a ton of splash, which I think actually adds to the natural appearance of it. The two legs it has are pretty iconic, and it really has more of a just sort of gentle gliding motion. Not a ton of splash, not a ton of water, Looks very natural. And if you ask Bill, probably the most important thing of the entire setup is his patented weedless hook. We have a single hook here, and there you can see the weed guard. What was unique about this weed guard at the time is that it actually goes from a single into a double so that, let's see if I can get a good angle here. Look at that, it passes right over the hook. I had my doubts about how weedless this weedless hook would be, but for the most part on the water today, it actually skated over most reeds, pads, and even scum. If there was one complaint about the weediness of this bait, it probably has more to do with this head design, which as the thing is sort of tugboating through the water, 
some weeds would catch up here. But the hook itself stayed relatively clean. Here's an original package of the Bill Plummer Super Frog with a, an older Bill Plummer. I love the look of this package. So there's uh, an old bait you can see. It has some weird growth on it from, you know, 40 years of hanging out in the box. On the back side, a message from Bill. Well, some cool graphics. You don't need to be an expert fisherman to catch bass on the Super Frog. The patented weed guard allows the Super Frog to be fished where a big fish or big frogs often lark. Among the lily pads, brush pals, weed beds, stumps, and other hazards. After the cast, let the super frog remain motionless for five to 10 seconds. I probably didn't do that. Then a gentle twitch of the rod tip to activate the swim fin feet, causing the legs to kick back in a lifelike fashion, closely imitating a real frog. During the first 10 feet of the retrieve, use a very slow stop and go motion. Most strikes will occur during this time. Quite often a bass will strike the super frog as it's lying motionless. The four colors it says it has is green leopard frog, brown leopard frog, black with body yellow spots, and yellow with body black spots. Those are the four that I've got. There's the super frog. I still love that packaging. Here's an old ad of the original plumber super frog. And you can see here the legs actually look a little bit different than the version I'm fishing with. And there's a much younger Bill Plummer with a nice bass. Photo proof, here I am with a nice eight pound bass I caught on the Super Frog. I think that's an eight pound smallmouth. <laughs> By the way, look at that reel. If I had trouble casting it with what I had, can you imagine? Oof. Most fishermen who see my toy frog don't believe it catches bass like I say it does. They say it's a harmless looking creature and quote, more a toy than a bass lure. I love that. Awesome ad from Bill Plummer. And it wouldn't be an episode of Retro Bass and if I didn't bust out at least one old Bass Pro Shops catalog. Here's one of my favorites, my 1978 Bass Pro Shops master catalog. There we go, there's a nice spread of the Bill Plummer Super Frog. And it looks like it's got the different um, feet style. I don't know why they changed. I don't know if because of the ones I had were breaking up too much. Bass just don't stand a chance with Bill Plummer's Super Frog. Oh, uh, what an awesome spread. Now with unique planing hull shape for faster retrieves, Bass Pro Shops price $1.99 for a frog where you can get three of them for $4.99. Look at those things. I was joking about my equipment earlier and I definitely want to do a old school versus new school to show you my traditional frog setup versus what I was fishing with today. The rod today was that five and a half foot pistol grip, medium light action rod. Definitely not the best setup for frog fishing ever invented. Luckily, the biggest thing I caught today was that toad. Otherwise, I might have been in some trouble with my tackle. Here's my typical frog setup rod. It's a Shimano a Corrado seven to one reel. Paired with this seven foot six inch heavy action rod, 65 pound braid. Now this frog is from Lunker Hunt. And while it is in fact a hollow body with the double hooks, look at those legs. Doesn't that look familiar? To prove my point, here's a Lunker Hunt next to the old school Bill Plummer frog. Pretty similar. In 2006, Bill was inducted into the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, and it's a spot that I'm sure was well deserved. In the comment section down below, let me know what is your favorite frog that you like to fish with. If you want to see more vintage lures featured like the Bill Plummer frog, be sure to subscribe and definitely hit that bell icon, otherwise you won't know when I post a video. Till next time, keep those frogs afloatin', stay safe, and be sure to fish at old school.